I bought this game for a dollar. Now I want to be clear about something, which is that I've gotten some pretty good games for a dollar. But how good is this game? Of the people who have played it, 60% stopped playing within the first half hour. I know this because there's an achievement for completing the first act that only 40% of people on Steam have, and that number quickly drops off another 10%, presumably because like me, the second people got the first act achievement, they groaned, and unlike me, decided there were better uses of their time. This is the Sniper Ghost Warrior experience. Oh, I'm sorry, does this look like Call of Duty? Did you expect to be a sniper shooting people from more than 200 meters away? Or a ghost infiltrating areas without leaving a trace? Or a warrior beating people to death with a club? Well guess what guys, you just got punked because you got budget Call of Duty. City Interactive is responsible for this and surprise surprise, they're a budget studio from Poland. Well, they are pretending to not be a budget studio anymore. And this game was supposed to be their big debut into big boy development. <laughs> Now I want to be clear, I don't like bullying budget studios for doing what they do and making janky games. I usually go rougher on mainstream game developers because, honestly, mainstream developers and publishers should just know better. But this game is awful. If the SCP Foundation were real, I would be calling them right now because this game is anomalous in its ability to continually innovate awfulness. That pretty little red dot tells you where the bullet is going to hit. What the hell? No there isn't. Turns out there is on lower difficulties. They were too lazy to put in a line of code that checks what difficulty I'm on before playing the audio line. You can't reload if you're up against a wall. That's not a joke, it got me into trouble a few times because I would need to reload and I couldn't because the game was doing that thing shooters started doing where you raise your gun and cover. Except most other shooters are robust enough to still let you reload in this state. The game where you spend 90% of your time hiding behind cover doesn't let you reload if you're too close to the co- I, I don't feel good. You were making this in 2009, there were free audio libraries with better sound effects. Hell, you live in Poland, I'm sure a quick drive out to the countryside and 20 bucks could have produced better sounds than whatever intern you recorded that day. See? See? And why does this guy running out of dialogue but keep talking on the phone? You had time to animate him talking on the phone but not putting his phone away? And why do these guys keep talking after they're dead? Why don't these guys have pupils? Why does this boat jerk around like it's an NPC? What is this, Fallout 3? Was the only way you could animate vehicles to make them NPCs? This isn't some janky shit CI put together themselves. This is the Chrome Engine 4. The same engine that was used for Call of War as in later Dead Island. Both games that are probably going to be on this channel at some point. This game physically hurts me to look at. Not because any particular part of it is ugly per se, it's just... Anytime the sun is out, the leaves cast these awful shadows with no AA. Mix that with the foliage on the ground and then add on the budget 2010 graphics and it's just awful. And just as I started to get a headache from it, it started raining and made things a hundred times worse. I had to take a break two hours in because I felt like I was going to start violently convulsing. Plus, the field of view is really tight, because in a game about playing a sniper, what I need is tunnel vision. Yeah, I know this is a console shooter genetically, but why can I raise the cap of the frame rate in the settings but only to 100, yet the game ignores the cap anyways and does whatever the fuck it wants? Thank you for the sudden loud gunfight that blew up my real life eardrums. It really immersed me in the experience of a firefight. Oh, thank god the game crashed. It's only gonna do this three more times and I don't know why. I see it as the game extending some small mercy as though saying it's entirely my fault that I kept playing. And these shadows for the character models are really good, like better than some AAA games I've played on this channel. Not sure how much of that can be attributed to the developers and how much is attributed to the engine. Actually, I am sure it's the engine, because at one point I realized there was only one character model for the shadows, despite me playing somebody who wasn't wearing a ghillie suit.
Speaking of, why are there sections where we are body hopping? The game was easily at its strongest when we were alone doing our own thing on our own terms. Every single time we introduce a second person into this game, it immediately derails and goes from 5 out of 10 to 3 out of 10. If I go prone, I can look up through the underside of a Humvee's hood. Got that, Mother 2. On my way. And here's a hole in the terrain you can get stuck in. Honestly, I'm surprised I didn't find more of these. What with the foliage, I'm sure it wasn't just the players, but the map editors too who had a hard time seeing what was going on. Speaking of getting stuck, how does spending 20 minutes trying to figure out a way past some guards because you triggered them before the game saved and your character decided to bring a pair of binoculars instead of a real gun sound to you? Why are the binoculars a weapon? Why can't I trade my binoculars for a real weapon so I can fight with a gun that shoots farther than 10 feet? Why is there a one weapon limit? Oh, it looks like there are two, but really it's one plus a shitty suppressed pistol. Does that say caliber 48 auto? It, but it, it's not ACP, which is the copyright part, I think. The, the 45 auto part is fine, it's ACP that's held by Colt. You know what I wasn't expecting? quick saving. For a game as inspired by Call of Duty as this, I'm surprised at its conclusion. It does flash the screen because I assume there used to be a slight loading time for it that's gone away with more powerful processors. Can can I get a freeze frame on it? Cool. Also a health bar, although 30% of it regenerates, so don't expect to be doing anything cool with all that health you won't have. But hey, look at that. I know how close to death I am without having to divine what hue of red corresponds to what value of health I have. And there are health packs. And you don't get one but three from first aid kits, but you max out at five, so if you take it early, they're just gone. Don't expect to have to manage resources, though. This game ain't that interesting. At first, I thought I had a really limited ammo pool before I realized that the UI was overlapping the loaded and overall ammo pools on top of one another. 300 rounds for a semi-automatic rifle, and everyone uses universal ammo and drops plenty. At this point, there might as well not be an ammo limit. You can turn off auto-reloading which is something I never realized anyone would ever be concerned about having an option for. But you know where you can't turn on? Aim toggle. This game where you expect to spend 90% of your time looking through a scope doesn't have the option to toggle your aim on and off. But at least it has crouch toggle, right? Well, yeah, but good lord the stancing in this game. You have the usual for modern military shooters. Stand, crouch, and prone. But it's not exactly responsive. You don't press the button to crouch, you hold it for a second. And if you want to go prone, you hold it longer. But you know in a cover shooter and a pseudo stealth game where stancing is important, I really want to be sure I don't accidentally crouch. Better to have the delay because who would want fine control over their character movement? There's, there's this bar here, and sometimes it goes down, and I don't know why, or what it corresponds to. There's a lot of stuff in this game that doesn't tell you about. I didn't realize I had throwing knives until I had to get some C4 out for a mission and I started pressing random number keys looking for the C4 and found the knives. I want you to bear in mind I played the tutorial and twice I was asked if I wanted to skip it and I said no both times. I played the tutorial as long as I could and it didn't bother to tell me about the fucking throwing knives. It did tell me about the grenades though because you know what fits into a game about sniper ghosts? Grenades. Except when my character refused to bring them on missions where I was going to fight large groups of enemies. Normally in this kind of operation, I would plant all the C4 and then blow it up all at once to maintain the element of surprise. Not this game. No sir, I blew that shit up as soon as I could because I figured this game might do something stupid like despawning if I went out of range or require two sticks or something. Why take the risk, right? Wait, why are there throwing knives? I have a suppressed pistol and granted, it's pretty random on how many shots it takes to kill someone. It's just weirdly included. It was fun to run around a level throwing knives at people though. This is what death looks like. This sh should not be what death looks like. I mean, I've never died before, so I guess I'm not an expert. This is what happened on Windows XP when you would alt-tab out of a game on, like, DirectX 7. This is what happens when you break out of levels on id Tech 3. I don't even know what you have to do in order to set the game to fuck up like this. 
I'm walking down the road, and all of a sudden I just start taking hits. So I think there might be a sniper, so I look down the entire vertical axis of the indicator and nothing. There is no sniper, besides me anyways. There's no sounds, and it's not a suppressed weapon because suppressed weapons sound like this. I guess there was just some anthrax floating around the air that day that is just killing me for some reason. So I have to book it, pumping myself full of health packs, and I make it to the objective, and the game springs a surprise two-minute turret section on me. But instead of doing that, I just hide behind the sandbags, and you know what? I was fine. There are several turret sections in this game about sniper ghosts, and guess what? They're embarrassing. This is a 50 cal M2. It's one of the most iconic mounted machine guns I can think of. It's got that iconic <laughs> slow fire that you know is destroying whatever it hits, because if it shot any faster, it'd probably be a war crime. Any gun in this game that fires faster than semi-automatic is practically unusable. The enemies have just a little too much health, so you have to land multiple shots, which can be a pain when your gun has the recoil of a fucking howitzer. The game also alleges to have realistic ballistics with wind, gravity, breathing, and travel time. Allow me to deconstruct all of these. The wind is bullshit because there are barely any indicators of it traveling, and since I don't have a finger to lick, I have absolutely no clue which ways it's blowing to account for my shot. I don't doubt it's there, because I would occasionally randomly miss my shots. Gravity would be fine if I could range my rifle. You added a rangefinder to all the scopes, so why not the ability to range my weapons as well? I'm just supposed to guess what lines correspond to what, huh? Also, you don't start to experience bullet drop until at least 150 meters for most rounds. It feels like all the bullets in this game have a really low grain count. But you know what helps with gauging bullet drop? Feedback. Either impacts or tracers. I can understand sniper ghosts not wanting to use tracers, but is this really the line in the sand we're drawing for realism? There are bullet impacts, but since 90% of the ground is covered in foliage, you're not going to see them. The breathing system works mostly fine. More exertion means a higher beats per minute. My character is a little arcadey and recovers from high BPM really quickly. The average is 80, which makes sense given we're wearing a ghillie suit in the jungle, but you recover from 130 way too quick. Also, it affects sway, so it's more annoying than anything else. And finally, travel time. To give an example, 556 travels at about 950 meters per second, and since every engagement in this game is less than 300 meters, that means there really shouldn't be any noticeable travel time. Add to that, any weapon that doesn't have a scope has iron sights, and these things are absolutely awful because they also sway. The pistol sight was the worst because like half of the time, the front bar would be behind it, obscured. This is just straight up stupid. While your arms are going to sway at least a little bit, that doesn't result in the front sight moving out of line with the rear sights. Because that would only happen if you were moving your wrists. What happens rather is the whole gun would sway because the part that's moving are your arms because they're suspending a weight a few feet off their base. Just add that to the RNG damage and range of the water gun and that's the pistol. Really worth making it the one fucking gun I can't drop. All this and I haven't even talked about the story yet. That's unprecedented for this channel and honestly I didn't even want to be a story critic. I'm just playing the cards I was dealt. We play as Delta Force Sniper and Infiltrator Sergeant Tyler Wells. Really? Another sergeant? Hmm. Sometimes you can play as another guy, Private Anderson. A private. In Delta Force. Yeah, okay, I see nothing wrong with sending a private as special forces over to some random ass South American country. We're in the country of Isla Turena, or Thunder Island. Don't know why it's called that because it's basically paradise minus the odd crocodile or alligator or whatever the fuck they call them there. We're here to, and you guessed it, destabilize the region by toppling its local regime, passionately nicknamed as the regime. They do the usual stuff like randomly murder civilians. Nearby village, request for permission to engage. It's your call, Razor 6. So we sneak in and go shoot the head honcho General Vasquez, but he somehow survives because for some reason, there is an explosion that throws him across the room right as my bullet would have hit him. Never mind his insides being mush, I aimed center mass, there's no way he didn't die of an infected gut wound later. Also, why did the fucking thing explode? 
This game has secrets with masterful supplementary writing. Get this. The regime is buying 300 rifles so they can defend their Territor Z. Now, you heard that right. Territor Z. They spelled territory wrong, but not with a U or a T or an H or a 6, but with the letter in the alphabet that is across the keyboard. Fun fact that I didn't know, but a Polish keyboard is not in QWERTY, but in QWERTS. So I guess somebody used to typing on an American keyboard had an afternoon to translate the secrets and didn't realize they were switching up their Z's and Y's. Here's some highlights. We're trying to escape the region and we make a daring jump across a broken bridge, mind you that we're carrying a grappling hook, only for our radio to go flying away. And rather than grab the radio off the next person we kill, we opt for using their ham radio at their base instead. To match the sound of our rifle as we take out some counter snipers, they fly a couple jets overhead. But I can't actually connect the second shot, so they awkwardly have to do it again. I just like the idea of fighter pilots sitting in standby just in case a sniper somewhere needs to cover up their shots. Never mind when we came up here, we had a suppressed Mark 12, but now we have an unsuppressed 50 for an engagement the Mark 12 could easily handle. At one point, our spotter betrays us because we recovered the plans to a nuclear bomb in the location of a uranium deposit. Like, hold up. You participated in stealing the plans from the guys you're now going to sell the plans to. I didn't even know this character wasn't the spotter from the first mission, so I'm kind of confused. Who is this character? But before the regime can execute us, because they didn't just think to do it on the spot, we get rescued by some guerrilla fighters who literally deus ex machina for a level then peace out. Like, Delta Force was in the region, you just as easily could have had them rescue us. You know that thing where we shoot a gun at somebody from far away to assassinate them? We only actually do that twice in this game about sniper ghost warriors, and only about a third of the time are we ghosting around areas where it is blatantly obvious you drastically turn down the vision of the AI. Sometimes the AI has the eyes of a hawk, but in quote stealth unquote sections, I guess they forgot their glasses. The whole premise of this plot is that communist people in South America want to build a nuke and we can't allow that for vaguely defined reasons. The concept or implications of national sovereignty are never discussed. I'm honestly blanking on most of the events of this game because the logic just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a section where we go to steal a truck to infiltrate a base to almost immediately get caught stealing the truck and get in a very loud, very violent shootout, only to still use that same truck to successfully sneak into their camp. Then they drop us off at the entrance to the camp, drive to the other side, then ask that I cross the entire camp stealthfully to help them out. Yeah, fuck you too. I think this game is actually about mental illness. Tyler Wells suffers from some kind of personality disorder that doesn't allow him to recognize the rejection in his life, and most of the plot is about how people in his life are trying to get him killed so he can finally leave them alone. That might explain why everybody's such an asshole to us on the radio. Well, we finally get to the end of what can charitably be called a story, and it's a sniping mission on the guy from the first mission. And I almost softlocked my game by quick saving right before a failure state, but managed to pull it off by spamming rounds. The end. Only it's not. This game didn't just have a prequel in Sniper Art of Victory. It didn't just have a DLC campaign that I am not fucking playing. It had not one, not two, but three sequels. And you know what? I have to respect that. I don't have to like it, but I respect it. If Metacritic is anything to go by, they have gradually refined their craft into a passable range, which is pretty good for a Polish budget studio. Given the games on sale often, I think it holds a firm position as a so-bad-it's-good modern military shooter.